Hi guys, Max here and welcome back. Today I'm gonna show you what happens if you buy the wrong memory kit on Ryzen. Ryzen are great CPU, with the right memory speed and timings, they can really shine and let you play or work even with a tight budget. But there's a catch. Most of the memory kits are optimized for Intel, leaving you a very limited choice. Making the wrong decision here can be very painful in terms of money and time. The system may become unstable or even didn't start at all. But don't worry, I will also tell you how to prevent this scenario. Imagine that you have just built this PC, a Ryzen 5 2600, a GB AB350 gaming free and an RX 570. This is probably the best value gaming PC you can buy right now. And if you watched my previous video, you know that I always advise for high frequency memory kits. And you saw this HyperX Predator 3200C16 on Amazon and it was like 70 to 80 bucks and you decided that is the kit to go. But well, probably was not a good choice and now I show you why. Usually when you build a PC, at least when I build a PC, I go into the BIOS, I set the default settings, I install Windows and then I go back to the BIOS again to set the memory. And it's a very easy task, at least it should be a very easy task. You go in the first tab, you select the profile number one, which is the correct one, 3200 MHz. And if you want to control the advanced memory settings, you see that it's C16 and you leave everything on auto because this is how it's supposed to be with the correct profile. So F10, yes, and the system will start. Now that we have started the system with the profile, we are going to check. No, we can't check anything because as you can see, we have a very nice blue screen. The system restarted and now we are in Windows again. What I'm going to do is to check with the CPU Z if the settings are correct. So we check the memory and we see that we have the speed and timings of the profile. So 3200 MHz and C16. We all know Windows, so we know that sometimes a blue screen may happen. And I decide now to run a game. but apparently the blue screen is still here. Now think that you are in this specific situation. So you have built everything, you have configured Windows, and you have tried to set the XMP profile, and now you have blue screen. You cannot do anything. When you touch something, it goes in blue screen. What is the first thing you're going to do now? This is a real question. I would like you to share with me all the things you're going to do in the comment section. I'm really curious about that. But now, let's get back to the topic because I know this is a RAM issue, so now we are going to do something to fix it, at least trying to fix it. This memory kit have two profiles, one at 3200 MHz C16 and another one at 3300 MHz C15. So what you're going to do now is to go to the second profile and load it. As always, F10, OK, and we start the system again. So at least we are trying to get the memory run at a decent speed, which is not the one that you purchased the kit for, but at least we are talking about 1300 MHz C15. So a very nice speed anyway. But as you can see, we have another blue screen. So neither with the second profile, this kit is stable. The system booted, so now we are going to check if everything is set correctly. But the system crashed again. Another blue screen. Now the things get difficult because at this time you have selected all the two profiles and none are working 
and unless you know exactly how to troubleshoot memory issue and set the profile, you have a tough decision to make. Now you are in the BIOS again, with the first profile that is not working and the second profile that is not working either, that leaves you only a couple of choices. The first one, the wisest choice you can make, is to take the kit, return it and, well, buy a kit that is 100% compatible with your motherboard. Or you can try to set it manually, but it means you have to set the frequency, the timings, the sub-timings and the voltages, something that is not easy to do. So again, if you don't know how to do it and you have to do guides and watching video, how to do it, you have to learn it from scratch, don't do it. You are going to waste a lot of time. With this specific combo, I tried myself for one hour and was unable to reach frequency above 300 megahertz. This of course is one of the worst case scenario because with other motherboard I managed to run the kit even at 3200 megahertz C14. So with motherboard that are usually more expensive with more control you can set it manually but it takes time and you need to know what you're doing otherwise you're going to really trash your time with a memory kit that is not willing to do and really sometimes when it happens I would like to take my sword and cut the bastard in half but anyway now I'm going to do another test this uh, Vengeance Corsair Vengeance 16 gigabyte 3200 megahertz C16 another kit that you can find really cheap on Amazon like 150 120 dollars for a 16 gigabyte kit that seems a very good deal but now I'll show you why it's not so now I'm going to change the sticks with this Corsair Vengeance LPX so now the system should boot and we should be able to change the timings and set the XMP profile. So now we are into the BIOS and we have only one profile. So I select my profile, 3200 MHz. So it's 6, 16, 18, 18, 18, 36. Everything seems fine. F10, save and exit. Let's see what happens. Of course, I knew the result because I already tested this kit before. And, well, you don't see anything because the PC is not even booting. So we set the profile and the PC doesn't start at all. And this is bad. I mean, I know that is for the memory kit, but if you have built everything and you try to start it with the memory profile, you don't really know where the issue is and honestly to do a troubleshooting especially if you don't really know how to do it because it's the first time you've built a PC this is a really a tough situation so again you have no choice take the kit return it and buy a kit that is 100% compatible with your motherboard the first kit that I tried the HyperX Predator 3200 MHz C16 Usually they have Hynix M chips on it and they are not recommended for Ryzen because they are very difficult to tune. The latest kit I tried, the Corsair Vengeance, they use usually Samsung d die, D like Delta, uh, to not be confused with the Samsung b die, like Bravo. b die are the best chip for Ryzen because they really they can scale, they for sure that they run without any issue and you can even overclock it. But in this case, we had two different chips. I think one of the worst chip for Ryzen because sometimes they didn't even get your system up and running. But I don't want too much to get into technical details. What you really need to know if it's the first time you built a PC or if you are not so used to do these kind of things is that is something that is called QBL list, so qualified vendor list. You can find it in the website of the motherboard brand. And you go into that list and there's a lot of serial number with the name of the memory that are tested. 
It means that they tested that kit with that specific motherboard and well, it's not guaranteed 100% that it works, but it's very unlikely that the memory kit doesn't run at the rated speed. So remember that is the only thing that you need to know about memory. Go to the specific manufacturer of your motherboard, check the list and pick a kit in that list. You just double click copy and paste into Amazon or whatever the, your shop is and try to find the right kit. If you cannot find the first, try the second one. I'm sure you can find a good deal with a kit that is 100% compatible with your motherboard. I will never get too tired to tell you this because if you buy the right memory kit, with a click you can set the XMP profile, the DOCP profile and start using your PC without any issue at all. Or if you buy a good memory kit and if you want to try to overclock your memory kit to gain some 5 to 10% uh, of performance in gaming, you can do it safely because if something goes wrong, you can always load your XMP profile and start from scratch. I really wanted to make this video because this is probably the most annoying issue you may have when building a Ryzen system. In the next week, I'm going to cover other videos about memory like how to choose the best kit for your needs, how to tune it and as well if you want it how to overclock it to have the maximum performance safely. Soon I'm going to start streaming on Twitch. You can find me there playing games, do setups, tutorials or just talking about tech in general. So if you are a Twitch user you can follow me there or even subscribe if you want. As always I really hope that you like this video if you have any question, please write down in the comment section, like and subscribe if you want it, and well, see you in the next one.